So I come in agreement with Holy Spirit that you would experience right now Him moving within you, dispensing fresh life. Wow. Wow. He's doing this right now for you. He's dispensing fresh life inside of you, divine life, His life inside of you, reigniting your capacity to believe, to believe Him, and therefore enter into the realm of confident faith and rest. I am Liz Wright. Welcome to Live Your Best Life. The only thing that matters now is living by the power of this wonderful new creation life. We're going to become an undefeatable force of radiating glory, and we are rising up strong now in this hour. Hi, welcome to this week's episode of Live Your Best Life with, of course, Mila's Right. And in our time together today, when I've been asking Jesus what he wanted me to talk about, I kept feeling him gripping my heart with the way he's been speaking to me recently um, about compassion, about his love and about compassion. And I've just spoken to our international mentoring community on this same theme. And Jesus just took us into a fresh experience of him as our God of compassion and a deeper understanding of why that is so critically important, why it's so transformational for our lives. So just in beginning our time, I want to pray for you because I'm feeling like his the Lord's passion rising on the inside, even while I'm sharing this with you, for you to experience his love today all over again, you know, and just to be brought back into that incredible place on the inside where we feel seen and known and understood and affirmed and valued and enjoyed by Jesus, which of course all of those things are true. It's just through the our daily walk, you know, the pressures and responsibilities and things that we face we're not always sensitive to his presence. We get emotionally wrung out, right? And he just wants us to be convinced today that those things are true, convinced in the deepest parts of your heart, no matter how difficult life might be for you right now, or how amazing it might be, you know, wounding, unmet needs from your childhood, just the stuff that we deal with in life the programming that we, unconscious programming that we can find ourselves running from, behaviors that we exhibit in life that, you know, from unconscious beliefs that are driving us, we're not even aware of the complexity and wonder of who we are, you know, the brilliance of our unique design. Jesus wants us convinced in the core of our being that he loves us that he's compassionate, that he's kind, that he sees us, that he's for us, that he enjoys us, no matter how we're showing up in life. Of course, he wants us to live in optimum health, body, soul, and spirit. He wants us to live in abundant life, free from suffering and pain and enjoying life and enjoying him and enjoying each other and free to love without fear or fear-driven self-preservation, all the stuff that clambers around our heart. But even so, as we're in process, which we all are, we all are in varying stages of awakening to the love of Jesus and the truth of who we are and the truth of our magnificent design and how besotted he is with us. While we're in process, he loves us and enjoys us and is calling us forth. And so I pray that as we begin our time, that you will be freshly sensitized by Holy Spirit. Just let's, wow, wow, woohoo, wow, just want to 
wow, stop there for a moment, pay attention. So Holy Spirit just began to move through me then, (laughs) which you could probably tell. He's moving inside of you right now. So I come in agreement with Holy Spirit that you would experience right now him moving within you, dispensing fresh life. Wow. Wow. He's doing this right now for you. He's dispensing fresh life inside of you, divine life, his life inside of you, reigniting your capacity to believe, to believe him, and therefore enter into the realm of confident faith and rest, as it says in the word in Hebrews, those that trust the Lord. You know, as we enter in through the archway of trust, as it says in Song of Solomon, as we step in through our supernaturally given capacity to trust the Lord, then we enter into rest. Wow. Wow. So I just felt him moving then and increasing your capacity to believe him and to sense his present presence, his present presence, even more deeply than you have before. Wow. Particularly, he's gracing you to believe him for the experience to move into the deepest recesses of your heart, every chamber of your heart, touched by his compassion, his kindness, his love, convincing the deepest, most needy areas of your heart that may still have love deficit, touching your heart with the truth, with the experience that right now he is within you. He's looking at you and he sees you and he's not judging you and he's not criticizing you and he's not emotionally distant. He's not a distant God. Sometimes it can feel like that. He's restoring your capacity to experience his closeness, his oneness with you, his dedication to you. Gosh, I'm speaking from his heart right now. He passionately wants to and is empowering you right now because of his beautiful spirit inside you to experience your oneness, to be convinced of his love for you, that he sees you, that he enjoys you. Wow. Wow. For some of us, that is a revolutionary concept, but it's not just a mental statement I've just made, an intellectual truth. It's a reality for us to experience. Thank you, Holy Spirit, convincing every part of our heart of your truth today, that you enjoy us. Right now, no matter what state you might feel you are in, Jesus sees right through your temporary reactions to this life's journey. He looks right into the center of you, you incredible person that he created. You have, wow, unique expression, unique purpose, unique value to his heart. And today, right now, he is moving so that you can experience this again. So I want to stay with him here for a moment and just keep flowing with his heart. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Every part of our hearts convinced of your attention, that there's no critical thought in your heart or mind, Jesus, towards us, just thoughts of love and excitement. Wow, gosh, Holy Spirit just showed me something. He just said to me, so I will share it with you because it's a question for us to reconsider if we never have 
He said, have you ever considered that he waits for you to wake up in the morning so that he can enjoy relationship with you? He can enjoy engagement. That his purpose in all that he did for us, going to the cross, coming back to life from the dead, everything that he did was driven by his passionate desire to have friendship, to have relationship with each one of us fully restored. That he knows you and he really wants to be known by you. He really wants to open up the mysteries of his heart to you. Wow. 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 What an amazing thought that Jesus, Father, Holy Spirit, can't wait for us to wake up in the morning so that they can begin to speak to us and enjoy our day and partner with us, have relationship. You know, just like we see displayed in the life of Moses, how, you know, scripture says he walked with God as his friend, face to face. He enjoyed fellowship. And now with Jesus inside of us, we are also walking face to face, nose to nose, (laughs) to use other language. He is one glance away. We turn into his presence, right? Through our conscious awareness, we turn within. Like, you know, you probably know well by now, one of my life verses is Ephesians 4, 23 and 24. I love the Passion Translation version, which says we are changed by every unfolding revelation. We are transformed as we embrace the glorious Christ within as our new life and live in union with him. And I can feel that's what Jesus is doing. He's just drawing us with the love that's in his heart that resides within you and me right now. He's drawing us away from the pressures. Let go of the the peripheral vision, meaning turn in right now and just leave the outside circumstances of your world just where they are. And just for these few minutes, embrace with your heart's attention all over again the glorious Christ within. His presence is your new life and live in union with him, meaning it's possible to do this right. We know that. We're just hungry. I know so many of us, but more for deeper experiences. And so is Jesus. That hunger that's rising in us right now is coming from God, coming from his spirit, because he's longing to take us deeper, longing to meet the deepest needs of our heart. Holy, one of the things that we're experiencing in our international mentoring community, the way Holy Spirit is moving, is we've had testimonies now of people being healed from decades of trauma, you know, big periods of their life where they've struggled with trauma, and in an instant, experiencing the love of Jesus they found themselves to be healed. And one lady wrote in weeks after the experience and told me that the trauma has never come back. She still remains in a completely free state emotionally. Same Holy Spirit is within you right now. So just pay attention to that. You know, he is the God of the impossible. He is our God of comfort, comfort and compassion. He's moving and he knows every moment of everything you've ever gone through and I've ever gone through. And he sees it all and he's seen the bad decisions we've made and he's seen the choices we've made where we've just gone way off piste in life and where we've behaved in a way that was just reaction. And we would, if we'd have been in our 
you know, in a right mind in that moment, we wouldn't have behaved like that. You know, where some of us are stuck in regret, just stuck in isolation, feeling like you're hiding, you don't feel loved or feel judged by others, all the complexity, the emotional complexity that we can find is our interior life, different stages in our life. He sees it all and he loves you and he wants to be your healer and deliverer and saviour and comfort. You know, you just have to, and I encourage you to do this, look at Jesus in I always look at him as our sovereign king. I look at him through the book of Revelation and remind myself and allow Holy Spirit to touch my heart again with the revelation of his sovereignty because I find that that releases power into my spirit when I, my heart freshly understands, yeah, I can sit this temporary situation in the context of that divine perspective, meaning when I get a glimpse and I believe again, I see again the magnificence of his sovereignty as creator, as the alpha and omega, the beginning and the end, the one who created me and you, the one who created everything, right? Wow. This planet, everything, life exists, like it says in the word, because he upholds all things by the word of his power. He could wrap up human history in a moment if he chose to. So I will often do that. And then I look at Jesus, like as he's depicted in the gospels, recorded in the gospels for us. And you will notice and you will know, I am sure, that when you look at the different accounts of the miracles, for example, when he fed the 5,000, Jesus fed the 5,000. And when he fed the 2,000, scripture records for us that Jesus looked at all the people, the thousands of people that had been following him for a couple of days, I think it was by that stage, two or three days, and they were hungry. And scripture says he was moved with compassion because they were hungry. And then, of course, he met their needs supernaturally. Same Jesus right now by his spirit, right? So important for us to remember this is moving sovereignly within you, helping your heart on the deepest levels, those maybe those wobbly, unstable, deeper parts of you that struggle to believe, struggle to rest, struggle to feel safe, perhaps struggle to feel seen and accepted and loved just because of who you are. Same Jesus is speaking that affirmation and worth into you today, breathing that fresh capacity to rest, to feel secure because you're being touched by the love of the King, the Shepherd King, the one who cares individually. He would go after you if you wandered away from the 99, like it says in scriptures. He goes after the one, no matter how far off we wander, he goes after the one. He goes after us. And the one who upholds all things, same Jesus, King and Shepherd, who under God girds our heart with strength, fresh strength, as we see him in his glory, in the truth and reality that nothing is impossible for him, that he is Redeemer. He is Creator and he is the one who loves you and is bringing you forth into the full expression of your authentic design. And he will never stop until every part of you is completely convinced of his love and radiating your new nature in Christ. So just meditate on the truth of who he is. I really encourage you, look at saying Jesus is within you, who fed the multitudes, who can very easily bring provision to you, and I'm sure has done and will continue to. Whatever the provision is that you have need of, whether it's food, real practical stuff, you know, food, 
finances to pay your bills, whether it's relationships, new job opportunities. He desires to bless you. He desires to bless you, to lavish you to with his love, to provide for you, to show you his goodness, to enable you to feel all over again today him holding your hand, that he's got your back, that he's very good at being God. You know, and then you just continue on through the stories and it just over and over and over, it says Jesus was moved with compassion, like with the lepers. Oh, holy, 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 holy. He was moved with compassion and he held them and he loved them and he affirmed them and he healed them. So he didn't just physically heal them, right? Which was astounding for their lives because they would have died clearly of a, a, a horrible, horrible degenerative disease. But they were also completely isolated from society. They, from memory, they had to wear bells around their neck in many, on many occasions, and they had to say unclean as they came anywhere near other people. So they'd lost their homes, they'd lost their families, they'd lost their friendship, their network, their community, their livelihoods. They were completely ostracized and outcast. So Jesus restored to them their physical health, their emotional well-being. Wow, I am sure their mental health. I'm sure it was a holistic healing that he did. He restored back to them dignity, belonging, their life. He put them back into society to thrive, restored. Same Jesus, same Jesus by his spirit. You know, even on the cross, when Jesus said, you know, in the scriptures, it's recorded for his father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. Even then, he's, he was just the core of Jesus' being, right, is compassion. He was dying in agony on the cross, and his heart was flooded with compassion for us. He was doing everything for us. And he just said, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. And he was filled with compassion, filled with compassion. And on it goes, you know, you look at the the woman who whose son had died, the widow whose son had died, and Jesus walked straight up to the funeral procession and was so moved with compassion. And he said to the woman, don't weep. And then he called her son back into life, right? Her son back into life. She would have been undoubtedly cared for by her son. And so as a, a widow who then had no son to take care of her, her prospects without a son would have been very difficult, I am sure. And so Jesus again brought back to life her beloved son and changed her life in that moment. Of course, she had her son back, which was the priority. But then she also was delivered in that moment from all of the implications of his death, from a life of undoubted poverty and difficulty and loneliness. He is so kind. He is so compassionate. And on it goes, we know so many of the stories. You know, the, the man who was crippled and the friends burrowed a hole in the roof of the house and dropped their crippled friend down to the feet of Jesus. And he said, get up, get up and roll up your mat and go home. Your sins are forgiven. And again, just compassion, kindness, liberation flowed into that man's life, healing restored life completely. The woman with the issue of blood, again, Jesus, power went out from him. Power went out from him. The woman who was caught in adultery, he just knelt down and he spoke wisdom. And the crowd that was there to murder her and judge her slowly walked away. And Jesus said, neither do I can get Go and sit no more. And I'm sure in those words was the power to walk out what he just asked of her. Because when Jesus speaks, his words contain the power 
to perform his intention, right? And on it goes all the way through the scriptures. He was moved with compassion. He was moved with compassion. He was moved with compassion. And miracles flowed. And miracles flowed. And just think about it. So he wants your heart convinced today of his compassion. He also, out of our incredibly privileged relationship that we have with him now, he wants us through our oneness with him moving in supernatural compassion, in the compassion of Christ. So if you are stuck feeling resentment, bitterness, anger, unforgiveness towards anybody, I encourage you to do this even for a few minutes every day, to sit with Jesus and sink into the arms of his indwelling presence and ask him to remind your heart of how compassionate he is and then to flow that compassion through you towards the one that you have not yet forgiven or are angry with or are reacting to or finding difficult or jealous of or bitter, all the stuff that happens to all of us. This is the fastest way in my experience to get untangled from reactions or get unstuck from unforgiveness as we begin to pray with compassion, remembering that everybody has a backstory. Nobody really wants to live unhappily in pain. Everybody wants to live a happy life, to know God, to feel loved, to feel accepted, to feel that incredible sense of belonging because we all belong. We're all part of the family of God and the family of the human race. We're just in varying stages of uh, understanding that, right? Awakening to the experience of that. So I pray right now, holy, hoo, 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 for such a flow of the compassion of Jesus to move into you even through the next few days as you spend time with Jesus just a few minutes every day. You will grow increasingly in the awareness of how compassionate he is and then flooded with that compassion increasingly. It will effortlessly flow to you towards others. We don't have to you know, try to become compassionate in our own strength. We have to rest into the one who is compassionate and just choose that way of heart and he will undergird it, right, as you know, and he will flood you the, with the virtue of who he is. And before you know it, that person that caused you to feel stuck, to feel resentful, where you are reacting, you will desire with a pure heart as a reflection of the Lord's heart, the highest and best for them, and you will be free. So I encourage you, as we finish our time, to just, if you can, to spend a few minutes, take the most problematic person that you know in your life that's difficult for you to deal with, and begin to do this. First and foremost, remember, they too are just a person on a journey, and they don't really want to be miserable and unhappy and full of stress and having a difficult time in life. They don't want to be suffering. They want to be really, everyone does, to be full of love, full of joy, completely secure in heart, knowing God, loving him, being secure in his love, loving others. So just begin to pray that for people, that they would walk in the fullness, their union, their experience, their relationship with Jesus that they would walk in the fullness of security of heart in the way that Jesus created them to live, tasting abundant life, full of kindness, full of the virtues of Jesus, of compassion and mercy and kindness and goodness and patience. Holy, wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, and as we do this, as we extend compassion towards the others, towards others in our life can see through the life of Jesus. It's compassion of heart through which the life of Christ flows. Miracles flow. We begin to see the miracle of multiplication and healing and even resurrection from the dead. <laughs> Because we're tapping into the, the center of the heart of our unlimited God. And we, of, there is nothing impossible for him. And there's nothing impossible for us who believe. So I agree with you for the miracles that you need, for the shifts in relationships, for your heart to be completely overwhelmed again with the compassion of Jesus, to be convinced of your value 
that you are seen and known and loved and enjoyed by our God. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Oh, man. Oh, we are praying for you. Have the most amazing week. And I look forward to being with you again next Monday. God bless. As we consecrate ourselves, giving all that we are to Jesus, we will experience his love. We will experience freedom. The more we lean into him, the more we surrender, the more power comes through us. God's going to encounter you.